Hey everyone, a little casual Saturday afternoon battles here. I'm trying to finish up the specialization process on the P51 DJ for Josephine. American Premium, I've got a 51H specialized. Against a regular P51D should be my equal, and then a key 94.2 on the other side. Um, in a map with a rocket base and a pair of airfields, as you can see here. I don't know. We'll, we'll go rocket base with the P51 here, I guess, to begin with and see see where I go from there. I've been pondering this week as we uh, fly through the dead space here to the zone. Um, one of the topics that's always a, a topic of interest among uh, World War Planes pilots, and that is what we technically call head hunting. That is, you know, following pilots around the map, or presumably following pilots around the map, trying to clear them out, or seeking after or going after PvP matches, right, in a game that is, is you know, essentially no longer PvP focused. It's, it's in there, but not entirely, right? And, um, I thought about that in relation to kind of what you're seeing here, right? Um, I'm about to clear out two guys in PvP. I'm not headhunting them. I didn't come to come after them uh, intentionally, but because of the way the game works, there's only there's five zones here. Three of those zones have meaning to us. So the other two, really, we're going to let bots worry about because there's only a handful of players in the match at any given time, right? Um, I'm going to let our fellow pilot up there have those uh, while I troll along to something different. Um, and in fact, I might can counter cap this zone if I do this correctly. I can. Oh, or that guy, that bot can drop somebody and that can be the end of that. Um, but uh, as you can imagine with only, for example, in this case, three zones that have, have any real meaning, uh, to us as one or two pilots, right? Uh, it can certainly look like we were being headhunted, right? Right here, right? Um, is he mad at me or or not? I don't I don't think he's mad at me, honestly. I think um, it just happened to be that I'm close to the spawn zone. This was a match or a, a place that uh, we were looking to uh, cap it. I'm going to stay out between the zones because I'm probably going down here. And um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not particularly worried about getting attacked by other players, I guess. I mean, I think there's are, there are times when headhunting happens, but I think nine times out of 10, the reality is it's a limited map. There's a limited number of players. There's a limited number of things you can do to win the game, right? And so as a result of that, you know, there's three sectors here. One that's pretty important as a central zone. And most likely that's gonna be, you know, a battle that uh, you end up having. So it also gets a little interesting to talk about um, headhunting in a negative aspect when you're talking about a, a game that is player versus player, online, team-based combat. Um, you know, the game is different now you know, for a lot of reasons. Um, the reality is it's an online game and you do play in a team, even if that team's only maybe one other person at times. Um, this is not a, a solo game that you play offline. Um, against the computer, uh, you know, or just against yourself. It's not like an old Atari game or something, right, uh, in that sense. And so the idea that you might be offended that someone would uh, come and kill you is, is somewhat strange in my mind. Um, that's just the reality of, of uh, this game, and you know, it's a good, good example of that, right? Uh, are these guys headhunting my teammate or were they trying to come here to win this match? And uh, this zone was one that, that was meaningful. We're going to go head on with this guy and he's going to die. Because I know how to do that. And uh, I don't think he, he knew to rotate his wings. We might get away here. This guy might get us. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's going to chase us. All right. So is he headhunting me? I mean, do you blame him, right? I'm the most threatening thing on the battlefield right now. And uh, and they control the most important zone on the map. So you know, why wouldn't he keep me from turning around and going to that zone and, and doing something about it, right? Um, I dove to help a teammate, but you know, if, if the positions were reversed, would I have done the same thing? And the answer is, of course. Of course I would have done the same thing, right? I would have absolutely gone in there and smashed <laughs> yeah, if that's what got me a zone and uh, and got me the lead in the game, right? So anyway, all that to say, you know, it's one of the things I've been pondering this week and hopefully uh, people don't take that too, um, 
too much to heart, right, when those things go on. Um, hopefully it doesn't wreck their game. Hopefully they understand if you are playing this game, you're playing an online team-based PvP game. PvP, again, may not be the central focus anymore, uh, but it is still nonetheless uh, an important part of the game and one that players are going to gonna be involved in. What is this bot bomber doing? This is what you should be worried about. Yeah, you should be worried about bot bombers who stick over at his own and uh, try to kill other players. That's bizarre. This guy should be uh, going to another place and capturing another zone rather than trying to shoot me down. He's going to cost me most of my HP here, but he ain't, ain't going to survive it. Holy smokes. Weird bots. Weird bots. Anyway, this game's not out of hand yet. It is interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kick the booster. We're going to make a pass at the key. He's going to come under. And we don't want, do not want to go head-to-head -head with him, but we're going to keep going. There's no way he catches us. If we play this right, he's going to try and use those 30 millimeters to catch me. But I've got the boost this time. And his uh, bot has unfortunately tried to follow me out of the zone, and that was not a good play on his part. Now we got a 2v1, because our teammate is over there. Just cracked him. I'm going to crack this guy, and that's going to flip the zone for us. And that's going to be that. Oh, we lost somebody. We lost the V32, I guess. And we're going to burn this guy down together and flip that. So uh, the goal at this point is to figure out where they're coming from, probably their airfield. I don't want to go into there because I don't want to face both of them or one of them on the respawn. All right, we'll see. Nope, 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 no thank you. Um, yeah, it's going to capture the other airbase. We might go this way. Just see if we can help capture this zone because if we can flip it, we'll have three to one. And that's the kind of uh, kind of battle we would want to take or kind of uh, move we would want to make. Nope, don't want to deal with you either. Oh, of course, I would lose my engine. And he's probably going to come around. This. No, he's not going to. He's going to keep going. Okay, good. And we're going to deal with some uh, ADAs then. And uh, we're regen and get points as we go, thankfully. All we need is one of these guys to make this... Uh, the zone ours. There we go. Three to one. And both of them are spawned. So unless that's him, it is him. Uh, he's a s not a specialized P-51D. So we're going to kick the boost and go up after him while he's distracted. And while he's in the guns of this B-32. Oh, this typhoon is going to be the death of me. Hanging around doing nothing. This is the problem with bots. They don't act with any sort of common sense whatsoever, right? There's just no reason for that typhoon to be there or to be after me. But nonetheless, here we are. So we're only down by a little bit, but we have two extra zones. Uh, unfortunately, that was Squall Line, so I'm out of this one. Um, but OFAB is doing absolutely amazing work, and we're about to flip that other airbase. So I feel pretty good about where we're at, especially with them only having four planes left. We'll probably, uh, given that this is going to be a foregone conclusion, let me tell you what, let's see if we can follow OFAB. I wonder if OFAB stands for something. Oh, oh I just passed him. There he is. All right, we'll go behind him. Oh, smart man. Yeah, he's going to help the uh, help the capping process here. Maybe go four to one. And maybe a, maybe a lost cause though. Our rocket base may get it before him. P-51H is a pretty plain. Not quite as pretty or iconic as the 51D, obviously. But, um, yeah, this zone's almost captured. So if you can get, you know, one of these planes, probably the next rocket does it as well. Let's see if that next rocket comes in. 
Oh, he's going to get this. going to flip probably with this guy right here. Yep, there we go. Four to one. And they've only got one left to be 109Z, so this is going to be our match anyway. So not a great match from me, but I'll take it. I mean, I think one of the disconnects for people is is a, a reality check that people need. Um, I, I'll just give you an example. So, um, And this is not an attack on anyone. Please don't take it that way. But uh, a 30,000-point personal match is not what the game was designed for. And, and it's not so much a, a show of skill as it is a show of how broken the game World of Warplanes is, right? The lack of players in the game. Uh -huh. If this were a full 12-on-12 12 12 match, there would be no 30,000-point games. They just wouldn't exist. Um, there wouldn't be the ability to do that. Uh, or, you know, I'm not to say it wouldn't exist entirely, but they'd be incredibly rare and much more difficult to achieve than they are now. So, um, you know, I think that ties together with headhunting because people want 20, 10, 20, 30,000 personal point games. Um, and that's not entirely feasible if you really do have a game that's evenly matched against other players, right? So take this for example. I was killed three times, okay? I killed seven targets, okay? So that's a little over a two-to-one, uh, you know, KDR, we call it the kill-death ratio in other games, right? KDR. So I was a very good pilot in 1.x. Um, oh, how close are we here? 50, 67 planes to go. We'll switch over and play the G next, um, which I'm going to close on it too. So I was a very good pilot in 1.x, um, and so I had basically a 3 to 1 KDR. So that's not a bad match to have a 2 to 1 KDR, a little more than a 2 to 1, 2.33 to 1 KDR, right? But it felt like a bad match because I'm not used to dying three times in a match, and I'm used to having more than 10k points in a match but i'm only used to those things because you know we're mostly playing bot matches particularly on the north american server so you know the idea of having competition you know whether it's actual head hunting or just basic pvp you know we probably as a community need to embrace that more and be a little less feisty about it uh, <laughs> you know uh just understand it's it's a part of what goes on in the game right and and if you're trying to win and the maps are set up the way they are, you're going to run into other players, particularly other players who know what they're doing, who know what sectors are important, where to go, what they should be doing in that sector. You're going to see them regularly in a match, right? Um, the only times I play a 1v1 or a 2v2 and I don't see people is usually when that other pilot is not entirely sure of what they should be doing, right? Or they don't necessarily have a great grasp on, on how to win the game per se. Um, the replay review that uh, Nova just did for me in the XF90, I saw the Yak-30 once in the entire match, and he was low altitude over, you know, a place that they were trying to cap, right? That's the only time I saw him, you know. But part of that is because we were playing a map where there was only really, I think, two important zones, right? The others were just garrisons. And so it's like, well, on a five-sector five map with only two planes, I may not see him. Um, there's no way Yak-30 is going to headhunt an XF90 anyway. Uh, but if there was a map with four important zones, you know, two airstrips and two command centers, maybe I see him a good bit because I'm trying to cap the same places he's trying to cap, right? All right, my least favorite map. I'm just, this map is so large. Um, no, not this one. This one's okay. This one's fine. It's, I'm thinking of the other one. Um, I don't like this setup, though. And obviously, this is one of the imbalanced maps. It just doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> We're going to kill one plane in the command center, let the bots finish the rest, and then move towards the airfield. It's all bots here, so this is going to be super casual, even more so than I promised you to begin with. No head hunting here, obviously. So, Still getting used to the 30 millimeter on the 109G here, uh, but I do really, really like the plane. Uh, we're going to get somebody who's climbing here. All right, one down. Let's get the other one. Let's see, I've got the 30 almost dialed in. Two down. All right, we're going to head to the airfield. The bots can capture the other 45 points. I feel confident. 
Let's see the other. Yeah, he's down low. God, the AA is locked onto me. Look how the thing, like, hello, AA. I'm, I'm not the threat. <laughs> Smart AA. Uh, coming after me rather than the bots who are actually participating in dropping the zone. Uh, we're going to stay up high. We'll probably go for this. Uh, oh, we, we just got it. Even better. Bots are on point today. Uh, we'll go for the LA-9, and then we're going to push on probably the other command center. We'll make this a short match. Now nah, he's on fire. There we go. Where's the other? Oh, he's below us. Twist. Drop on his tail. To get that 30 working in three dimensions, isn't it? And they just capture it right back. God, I love airfields. Don't you? It's crazy. They flipped it almost instantly. We lost what, three guys in that zone at one time. And so much for that. Guess this will be a longer match than what I promised you. Don't worry, guys. I'm professional. All right, let's clear this JU-88P, maybe. Can probably force him out right at the buzzer. It'll be 60 points. And then we'll go after some. Good Lord. Or not. 6v1 is not a good place to be when the uh, airfield flips. Still not sure we're in any danger of losing this match. Although, as you can see, you know, again, why are we complaining about headhunting? Complaining about complain about bots who can't capture 40 points when there's five planes in the zone, right? Like that's that's worthy of complaining. That's that's the part where you should start to worry about what's going on in the game, not about people who might have shot at you from across the map. Uh, or who wanted to, you know, catch you in some PvP. That's, that's not worth complaining about. This is, this is bonkers, right? That I have to come back over here and cap this. And this is what I mean, because bot players would have at least wiped 40 points worth of ground targets. Right? That's two AA, two AA things. That would have easily been done. One nine Z tries to turn with me. All right, and then this guy, right? I'm just, I'm going to do 120 points in about 10 seconds here, right? Uh, but our bots couldn't do 40 points unmolested by ADA or anything else earlier in this match, right? Like what? <laughs> what in tarnation, as the old saying goes. So, anyway, can't leave this A5 on my tail, I don't think. He's going to probably stay in this zone anyway, but we're just going to go ahead and finish him off and then push the airfield. Bots know how to do one thing, and that is lag roll out of a chase. It's about the only thing they know how to do. But they can do that at least. I was kind of hoping to go by the airfield and get 360 points, but I guess not. All right. We own both the command centers. We've got attack flights coming in now. That should make the difference in this match. I get my 30 millimeter lined up. You know what? Let's go 60 points instead of 40. All right, now we got an air ADA bot on our tail. Let's flip out and go get him. One potato. Who's on me? Nope. This is the other thing that really, you know, wigs you out, right? 
Like, I have a much better turn time than a bot typhoon. But somehow the bot typhoon... My, my, my bots can't capture 40 points on listed of ground targets. That's where I split the guns for, for sure. But uh, a bot typhoon can follow me uh, through evasive maneuvers, despite having a horse maneuverability rating. Crazy. All right, let's finish this one off. Got some great replays for you this week, by the way. I have a really, really good XP67 replay we're going to review. And then I have some things I want to take you through also. This is just sort of a bonus video. Um, enjoying the weekend a little bit. I think I can get these guys before they get my... 17, not that it matters. But uh, anyway, just this is just a bonus one. Just a topic that's been floating around in my head this week. Um, that has been... I don't know if it's really been active anywhere. It's just something I've been thinking about. Do a dive. Oh, come on, 30. Connect. Rudder up. Oh, you know, one of the things people have asked me about Zoom. I rarely use Zoom. I don't use Zoom. I use the first level of Zoom in Armored Warfare. I use the first level of Zoom in Tanks. Um, you know, the reality is Zoom only helps you so much when you have a game that has pre-programmed accuracy. And keeping your head on a swivel is uh, somewhat more important uh, than being able to hit your shots at range, right? Uh, so I kind of just trust, trust, and of course, Phantom hits. I kind of trust myself uh, in that sense. And I also have a Colored Tracers mod, which helps. And it's a little easier to see where those shots are going. Alright, my turn to do a lag roll, right? That make you dizzy right there? Probably did. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's an 11,000 point match. Where I didn't die. Did I die? I died once. I think I died once. The Typhoon, right? Anyway, here's an 11,000 point match. The previous match where I died three times was 7,000 7, point match? 8,000 point match? Which of those showcase is better for me, right? Uh, which of those is a better match? D does this one prove that I'm a better pilot? Or does the other one prove I'm a better pilot? <laughs> yeah. or, or does it matter, right? Is the game just a little wonky? And so good piloting and, and being a good player is something that you have to deal with you know, somewhat subjectively. Yeah, 7,000 point match. I don't know. Um, versus my 11,000 in this one. Yeah. I mean, which one? Who knows? Uh, for me, so speaking of which, uh, for me, what makes a good pilot is not personal points. Uh, it's not really even KDR. Because again, I mean, I just have a 10 to 1 KDR in this match, and that skews every other stat in my portfolio, right? But would you really consider me good because I killed 10 bots in this match? I mean, not really. So what, what makes a player good? To me, what makes a player good is understanding how the game is played. And, and the understanding of how the game is played is capturing zones. So what I generally look at for players is how many zones per match do you capture on average? If I had to boil everything down to one number, one number, it would be how many sectors per match do you capture on average? And my rule of thumb, if you capture less than one sector per match on average, you are still learning the game. You haven't figured out what the game is about yet. If you capture one to 1.99 sectors per match, you've probably got you know the game a little bit figured out, but you're probably still learning some stuff. Or you're struggling a little bit as a pilot, maybe you haven't done a lot of flight simulators and three-dimensional stuff, right? 
if you have two to three zones captured on average per match, you know the game. You know what you're doing. You're a competent pilot. I can trust you to do your job. Three or more sectors captured per match, you're probably really good at your job, right? And I, have to, I do have to take into account a lot of these, you know, maybe bot matches, so maybe not. Um, but generally speaking, I would think, even in a bot match, if you're capturing, you know, an average of three sectors or more, you know what you're doing, you're dialed in. And not only can I trust you, but there's a chance that you go off in a match and just dominate and carry, right? That's, that's kind of my rule of thumb. And four or above, uh, you know, I don't know what to do with that. It's sort of like super unicums and tanks. Are they really better than anybody else? Or are they just gaming the system at that point? So I think generally speaking, there's a zero to one, one to two, two to three, three plus category for me, right? So look at mine here. I've got 5,600, 2,700. So I've got a little more than two sectors per match captured. I'm a competent pilot. I know what I'm supposed to do in the game. Um, I know how I should approach it. You know, does this make me a world beater? Absolutely not, right? Um, but I, I know what I should be doing, and I, I take advantage of that, right? I, I play the game as it's meant to be played. Let's take a look at this one, by the way. Let's take a look at some of the other pilots in here. Not to call anybody out, because I have no idea what their stats are, but OFAB did great in that match. He captured three zones, right? I bet if we look at his stats, I guarantee you it's more than one you know, sector per match on average, right? Look, 4,300 sectors, 2,400 games. That's what, 1.5, 1.6? Competent pilot. Knows what he's doing. You know, maybe still learning the game. I don't know. But, but competent pilot. Look at his win rate. It's good. Right, and he's not flying overpowered planes, so we can kind of rule that out a little bit. He's a good pilot. That's what he's doing. No wonder we won, right? Uh, on the other side, you know, we got uh, Gyro who captured one per zone. You know, what do his stats say? How many battles? How many zones captured? Six hundred. So he's new. Less than a thousand battles, right? I mean, a rule of thumb in tanks is two thousand battles to know to know what you're doing. So no real shade on Gyro here. He's still learning the game, right? But even here, 680 battles, 1,300 sectors, you know, 1 1.5. Good, good. He's a competent pilot. I can trust him to know what he's supposed to be doing in a match, right? And, and he did. He did competent here, right? Um, two to one KDR. Great. Uh, T in here. What did he do? Captured one. Changed planes. What else? I didn't even know he switched to a P61. It's interesting. I don't know. Let's, let's see what the... See what the jazz is here on the statistics. There we go. What do you think? Less than one, more than one? Probably one of the two, right? Probably one of the two. I can't be more than two. I wouldn't think anyway. Unless they just, you know. Sometimes you play matches late at night, you fall asleep at the wheel. I'm guilty of that too. All right. 30,000 battles, 63,000 matches. So yeah, I guess he just, he just had a, he probably had a bad match. Although this is where, this is where secondary. So that's the primary stat. I look, this is a good example of secondary stats. Um, so I look at this, I go, you know, two zones, so a competent pilot. But I look over here, two, three, four, five, six, his top six planes flown are tier one and tier two. And one of them is notoriously overpowered for the tier. Uh, I can't tell you anything about this pilot. I don't know if he's good, bad, or sideways. Can't tell you anything because all of his stats are skewed by playing the lowest tier possible, right? I don't know. I don't know how good he is. There's, there's no definitive statistic on it. Um, I do think, you know, that's probably the best way to tell things uh, in terms of sectors captured, but you got to look at the exceptions. You got to look at what they're playing and, and ask yourself if that makes a difference or not. Anyway, enough ranting for this weekend on headhunting and what makes a good pilot. Hope you're enjoying uh, the missions to salvage. Um, they are going on right now. You're getting some extra goodies if you complete these. I got to work on it. I didn't play last night, so I'm, catch I'm playing catch up now. Uh, but some of these are pretty important for your calibration and improvement of gear. And so you'll want to hop on those. Um, and then there is also a discount on equipment. So if you need some extra gear this weekend, now's the time to get it. Good luck and good hunting in your battles. Again, uh, many thanks for all that uh, you've done to support this channel. Hope to continue producing some decent content for you. And again, I've got some great videos this weekend. Just wanted to give you a little bonus uh, thoughts with H0 as we fly over the weekend here. And uh, hopefully they're helpful to you. We'd love to hear your thoughts on head hunting. And how do you tell a good pilot, right? What is your rule of thumb for what a good pilot is in the comments below? And I will see you in those comments and in the skies.